What's up everyone, Thralls Metal here once again. I'm the Crack Nick and I have a collection update for you. Got another batch of interesting stuff here. A lot of double dips in terms of same band, just two different albums. Got some new releases in here too and even a couple that were given to me courtesy of a friend of mine on Facebook. And uh, yeah, this is a pretty interesting stack and let's just get into it. Catatonia, Mimosinian, I think that's how you pronounce it. This is a comp of rarities and B-sides, pretty much, you know, like a whole bunch of stuff that was released as like special edition stuff on more recent albums and even some more past albums. And uh, pretty interesting. The cover has to be a nod to Judas Priest. And I mean, they do cover them. They cover Night Comes Down in here. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and say, yeah, it is. Now I actually do have a good chunk of this and a lot of it is more recent. This is a two disc set though, and the second disc is loaded with a whole bunch of different stuff, including a whole bunch of demos and remixes that were on earlier albums. Like this pretty much goes all the way back to at least tonight's decision. And you know, a lot of it, I could see why there were B sides. Some of them I think are really good, especially the act of darkening. I really like that song, but Overall, I mean, this is kind of like a collector's only sort of thing. Like if you were just missing some of these bonus tracks, which some of these are really good, I'd say go for it. But if you're like just a more casual fan, I'd say, you know, and maybe at least check it out, but it is kind of like a collector's only thing. And I am definitely that. So I picked it up, but yeah, pretty interesting comp. Again, a lot of the stuff I already had, but the stuff that I didn't, I really did appreciate. And you know, there's some really cool, like kind of hidden gems that just didn't make the album cuts on here. But yeah, check it out, pretty solid. Turnstile, Glow On. Now, I have been hearing a lot of hype about this band and I figured it was time to check them out. And when I picked it up, I was actually kind of surprised to see the old Roadrunner record label, you know, print on there. So that was kind of reassuring at least. It made me feel, you know, less weird about buying this band that I just had not really listened to. I just knew the hype behind. And honestly, this is such a strange but interesting listen. It's really hard to describe. It's definitely old school hardcore and punk. Kind of reminds me of like the more melodic hardcore bands. Uh, I would say like Snapcase, maybe H2O. There's some stuff on there that really reminds me of them. But also like 80s pop, I guess. It's really interesting how they mingle this around. Like literally the opening track, Mystery, the synth opening <laughs> reminds me of reading rainbow and then it just kind of goes into this like mid-tempo stomper of a track with big shouted vocals that are surprisingly tuneful you get elements of i would say hip-hop uh there's also elements of like post-punk and goth rock there's stuff in here that reminded me a lot of the cure actually underwater boy definitely but when these guys want to go full tilt hardcore they deliver some solid riffs it kind of has like a crossover thrash feel when it comes down to solos too. This is just a very strange listen and I like it. I, I'm surprised I like it because some of this just does not seem like it would be my thing, but it ended up kind of being my thing. There's enough of that old school hardcore feel to it that really just kind of drives it. But the weird pop aesthetic and it's kind of 80s pop, I can get into that, is all over it. So strange listen. I don't know if it's gonna be like year-end material or like a little surprise on the list, but um, I'm definitely interested in more by this band. This is just a, a strange, weird listen that is kind of hard to categorize, but I uh, encourage you guys to check it out. It's just kind of odd. It's heavy in its own right, but it's also kind of poppy in another way. It's weird, just just check it out. I don't know if this is necessarily for like all the big metalheads, but I don't know. There's just something about it where I'd say definitely give it a chance because it's a fun listen. So check it out. Antichrist Siege Machine, Purifying Blade. This is the second album from this two-man Virginia-based black and death metal band slash maybe war metal kind of grindcore. This is insanely heavy. That I can definitely say for sure. Kind of like a blackened nails at some points. This is just so damn aggressive. And unlike a lot of like war metal that I've checked out, this actually brings in a lot of groove and it breaks up the relentless blast beats and insane chuggy riffs that are all over this. So I thought that was kind of refreshing because that's kind of one of my issues with war metal in general is it's just a bullet train of noise. That's just my opinion though, but I really enjoyed this because they broke it up and my 
god, this is fucking heavy. I will say it is kind of one gear, but they play that gear really well, and when it comes down to grind elements, it's older grind. Like, it kind of reminded me of early Carcass, like, first two albums. Well, mostly Symphony is a sickness, because that one is actually a little bit more listenable for me. And in terms of atmosphere, you get not one, but two really creepy, unsettling intros on here. And, you know, they're not back-to-back. -back. One's at the start, and then they're one, like, towards the end. It's more of an interlude. I call them intros because they do kind of segue into the next track pretty well. And honestly, as much as I bitch about intros, they succeed in being just kind of unsettling and dark and just kind of gross. But it just flat out works, and the spastic, insane ending to the inevitable penalty is just nuts. Like, uh, pretty much take the end of Raining Blood and just go nuttier. That's pretty much what they did. Really solid album. I really dig this. This is, I don't think, even a half an hour long, and it just beats the shit out of you, but in a fun way. I totally recommend this, especially if you're a grindcore fan or black and death metal fan. It has more of a grind feel, at least for me, but there are some longer tracks. But strongly recommend this. This is just an insanely heavy album, but actually pretty damn catchy. So yeah, check it out. Fluids, not dark yet. This is the third album from this Phoenix-based brutal death metal slash grindcore act. And the frontman is actually the main guy behind the band Thorns as well. Now. This is the first time I've picked up a Fluids album. I've jammed a bit of them. I figured, well, why not start with this new one? And holy shit, right from the start, that is the most disturbing intro because I think I know what it's from and it's uh, essentially a dude's attempted suicide. At least I hope it was just attempted because that makes it even more dark. But yeah, this, this dude essentially laughing about cutting himself and bleeding with dark synth wave stuff and just, I don't know. But it goes into a lot of mortician worship. But these guys are maybe a little bit groovier than mortician, and I think the songs are generally a little bit longer, but this is insanely heavy. This is one of the heaviest things I think I've listened to just in terms of production. The bass is just this massive wall of fuzz and sludge. And then when the guitars come in, Honestly, it's a little difficult to kind of distinguish the two sometimes because it just creates this wall of noise and you just have these brutal death gurgles just over top of it and just twisted samples on here. The thing though with Mortician is I know the samples are from horror movies. These samples, maybe a little bit more questionable, but in terms of creating a caustic, unsettling atmosphere just because of how real that is, man, this is just, uh, dark. It, you know, not dark yet is a lie. That's, it's dark. It, it got to dark right away. Overall, though, I think it's a pretty decent release. There's some, like, down-tempo elements, really heavy breakdowns. This just pretty much succeeds at being really, really heavy. Not a lot of variety on here, but it definitely an engaging listen, and, I mean, if you want something legit disturbing, you know, this is... Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd say this is it. But definitely check it out, give it a chance. That first song might be a little bit difficult to get through, at least it was for me, just because that intro is really disturbing, but it's a pretty awesome listen. If you're looking for just something that is relentlessly heavy and unapologetic about being that heavy, I'd say definitely check this out. All right, we have a pair from Orlando-based hardcore slash sludge metal act, Bloodlet. We have Entheogen and Three Human Knights in the Cypress Trees. This was their debut album, came out in 1996, and this was their last album, came out in 2002. Both of these were on Victory Records, and I actually remember hearing stuff by them on Victory Records samplers, because I used to collect the shit out of them. And these guys always struck me as a very different band. They're kind of more in that realm of bands like 16 and Coles, that kind of blend of sludge and hardcore, especially Coles in terms of the vocals, it kind of had that frontman's very distinct growl. Very groove-laden, lots of weird transitions, kind of Soylent Greenish, except hardcore, so you get the hardcore grooves in there, but those weird kind of off-time transitions that just kind of come out of nowhere. But they do deliver some pretty cool hooks. The song One and Only on here has a very just 
flat out Nola sounding sludge metal kind of crowbar riff to it. Honestly, another comparison I can make is probably All Else Failed, if anyone remembers those guys, just kind of odd hardcore. A lot of the song structure on actually both of these kind of reminds me of them. Now this one is a little bit different. Uh, production is maybe a little bit better? I don't know, it's just different. But the notable thing on here is the inclusion of clean vocals. There are no clean vocals on here, at least none that I heard through the wall of sludge. They're definitely on here, and unfortunately they're not very good. They don't really carry a tune very well, they're kind of off-key, and I mean, honestly the cleans kind of sound mm, Danzig-ish, except he doesn't sound like he felt very well when he was delivering the vocals. Yeah, not, not great. But there are some interesting things they did do on this one, like changing around the production a little bit on I have such a hard time making new friends. Interesting, you know, kind of long-winded song titles. But they kind of include like an extra fuzzy bass on that one. I believe that's the only song that that really pops up on. Now, unfortunately, the thing I can say about both of these is it can sound kind of directionless. Like you don't know where the songs are going and sometimes they kind of just noodle about until they end. But I kind of do still like it because it reminds me of that weird sort of experimental hardcore and metalcore that I used to listen to. Recommend checking them out. It's odd, but you know, if you're a big Sludge fan, again, if you like All Else Failed and Cole Lask, I definitely recommend checking these out. Pretty interesting listens. All right, we got a pair of classics here. Judas Priest, Sin After Sin, Point of Entry. These were some I was missing. Actually, I did see Turbo on that shelf, and I didn't get it. I don't know, I might get that one just uh, because at least complete the classic circuit, I guess. I don't know, I'm not the biggest fan of that album. But I definitely wanted to get Sin After Sin, and I pretty much still wanted to get Point of Entry just because I love the opening track, Heading Out to the Highway. I think it's a great song. This one, just a great classic era Judas Priest album. Love the more aggressive sound, like, you know, this came after Sad Wings of Destiny, and I think this kind of upped the aggression a little bit more, and I think they did that better on Sand Class. This is a very interesting listen. It, totally, it can be all over the place, especially the song, uh, The Last Rose of Summer, which is uh, pretty much Judas Priest Afternoon Delight. It's um, a pretty ballad, and Rob Halford sings his fucking balls off, but it really was my thing. And honestly, the thing that I thought was really good, but really strange, and I totally forgot it was on here, was the uh, cover of Joan Bias's Diamonds and Rust. They did a great job on that, and it's kind of unrecognizable just because it's Judas Priest doing it, but yeah. Solid album, Stain Class, I think was a bigger improvement from this, but still really good. This one, it's kind of an odd one. It's right after the success they had with British Steel, the record company wanted a poppier album. They wanted to push some units. So Judas Priest obliged, even though I don't think they were entirely all in on this. There's some really good songs in here, namely again, Heading Out to the Highway. I love that song. Desert Plains, I think is a really, really underrated song by Judas Priest, but a lot of this felt stripped down to the point of just like, well, let's just make it accessible, but with not a tremendous amount of heart. And there are some songs here that I, I think are just bad. Like, You Say Yes and Hot Rockin', just not good. Uh, I don't know where their head was at during the recording of those, but it just sounds like a, a forced radio nugget that just really did not deliver a solid hook. But still, I'm glad I picked these up. Definitely happy about Sin After Sin. And this one, while it's not the best album, I still do enjoy the tracks that I enjoy on here, even though I do have them on the Metalworks compilation from years ago. Eh, this sounds better on the remaster. Anyway, really don't need to tell you much about this band because everyone pretty much knows them, and if you have never jammed them, I recommend checking them both out. But yeah, Juice Priest rolls, and check these out. Mythic Anthology. This is a compilation of pretty much all the works from this Pittsburgh-based Death Doom band that was all female. They only lasted a few years in the early 90s, but honestly, the stuff that they put out was flat out awesome. This was a three-piece and pretty much a good mix of like 90s old school death metal and flat out just disgusting doom metal. And I think given a chance, if this band actually hung around and just kept pumping out works, I think we'd be talking about Mythic more. But 
Unfortunately, we were just left with this compilation, but it's really cool that it's out there. Now, I believe the first four tracks in here are from their EP, and I gotta say, like, Dude, it's just flat out incredible. Like the old school 90s vibe, it has a very like incantation feel. The guttural vocals are particularly deep. The song Lament Configuration, which Hellraiser nods always win here. Absolutely awesome. Just solid grooves and nasty, nasty riffs. This is like kind of like the perfect blend of a band like Incantation, Obituary, and like early Paradise Lost because it has that sort of gothic dreariness in some spots. Now, the demos sound really good too. I think the vocals are slightly different on there. Like she got a little bit lower, I believe, on the EP. And then this has some rehearsals, but unfortunately they're not really recorded very well. And you actually have like better quality in terms of the demos and the same songs. But this is definitely retro review material because this is just an absolutely awesome underground gem of a band. And I think it's actually pretty awesome that I found out that the front woman and guitarist actually lived in my hometown for a while in the 90s, which that was pretty damn cool. Before she moved to Pittsburgh, she was a Toledo resident. And well, that's just cool, at least to me. I mean, Toledo's not that cool, but at least that was. But yeah, if you have never jammed Mythic, I strongly recommend finding this compilation. This is just some solid, nasty, ugly, gritty Death Doom, and you should check it out. Nihilist, Drown Demo. So it's pretty much a compilation of demos from 87 to 89. Now I actually have the official release because this is a bootleg of it. The only reason I got it was because this actually has um, three live tracks on it. That was pretty much my sole reason behind it. I know this stuff. I really enjoy this stuff. You know, the whole proto entombed and I guess by default also Unleashed and Dismember. This was the linchpin band for pretty much the entire Swedish death metal scene that popped up in Stockholm. But yeah, the live tracks don't sound great. In fact, they sound like they were recorded on someone's, like, you know, tape deck or boombox, like, way off to the side of the stage. Or some of them actually sound like they had a little handheld tape recorder and just put it right in front of LG as he was screaming because it's just super muffled. But yeah, I snagged it just because that was the reason. And, I mean, if you're going to check this band out, I recommend trying to find the original, like, you know, official release. I believe it's on uh, Three Man Records. Don't know how much it's going for. It seemed like it was a little bit on the pricey side last I checked on Discogs. But if you've never jammed the Nihilist demos, it's just kind of a cool, like, listen to hear all the stuff that would become tropes of pretty much the entire Stockholm scene. But yeah, definitely check this out. It's, you know, pretty cool in terms of historical significance, at least for me. All right, we have a pair from Flesh Hoarder. We have Homicidal Necrophile and Relic of Putrescent Filth. Now, these were actually sent to me by their frontman, Nick Moreno. Thank you very much. I'd actually been friends with him for a while, and I saw that he was in a band, and he actually got a hold of me about it, and was like, sure, man, send me some stuff, and I'll gladly go over it in a collection update. And he did send me a poster. Unfortunately, when I tore the package open, I tore the top off the poster like an idiot. So, thank you for the poster, and I opened shit like a savage caveman, so I kind of fucked it up. But these guys are a flat out brutal death metal band from San Antonio, Texas, and these are both of their full lengths. Now, Homicide or Necrophile is their first one, came out in 2018, and both of these albums are different, and it's really cool how they're different. This is straight up brutal death metal. It is just brutal as hell. The production is just savage on here. The guitars are just filthy, crunchy sounding. It does have a bit of that brutal death metal snare that I don't like, the real plunky sound, but it's pretty much just packed with like devourment meets suffocation. It is brutal as hell. The songwriting is you know, less dynamic. It's more pretty much about delivering a brutal, sick song every time. And of course, brutal songs. I mean, <laughs> necrotic slut chunks. I mean, I, uh, yeah, sure. But honestly, like, when it came down to it, there's really some solid rips on here. It isn't just a flat out beat down all the time. Not a fan of the pig vocals. That's just me, though. But this was pretty badass. And this one kind of caught me off guard because I was kind of expecting a little bit more of the same. But this one gets flat out riffy, flat out groovy, and this really conjures up some killer, killer hooks. It's still packed with, like, big slams on here, but... These guys kind of take maybe like a Blood Red Throne approach where 
it's laboring big hooks, but they're brutal hooks. They're just powerful, nasty riffs, but catchy as hell. Especially the title track in here. I think that one is probably one of the most hook-laden songs on here. And I noticed the song titles are a little bit less gory on this one, but this one, in terms of changing their sound ever so slightly, they did it well because they did not sacrifice any of the brutality on here. This is still brutal as hell. Production is definitely different on both of these. This one feels a little bit thinner, but the guitars have like a little bit more of like a thrashy sort of crunch to them versus this is just fucking brutal as hell. And I feel like this was mixed a little bit more evenly, but both of these are really solid, but for like different reasons. And this is kind of cool because you get to hear the evolution of the band because this is a really solid changeover. I really dig this. This is a solid piece of work, but so is this again for like different reasons. So yeah, if you've never heard Flesh Hoarder, I strongly recommend checking them out if you're a brutal death metal fan and you're just a flat out death metal fan, I think you'll totally dig these guys. So definitely check out both of these. All right, got another famous pair here. We have the most recent reissues of Cancers to the Gory End and Death Shall Rise. I already own both of these and, you know, different reissues, but I'm me, so I bought them again. And I mean, I'm still glad I bought them again because these albums fucking rule, especially Death Shall Rise. I love this album. I mean, we got James Murphy, you know, death metal guitarist wizard doing lead work on here. They actually came to Morristown to record this and he jumped on board. And this is just nasty, raw, thrashy death metal. Both of these are really great albums for different reasons. There's a bit of a stylistic change. This one had a lot more thrash metal to it, but this one pretty much fully embraced that more Tampa sound. And they both ended up being great for different reasons. I love both these albums, hence why I bought them again, but you know, they sound good. It's a cool reissue. There's some extra live tracks on here and I didn't need them, but I got them. And uh, here they are. And if you love Cancer, you should definitely check out these reissues because they sound really good and there's a lot of cool extras on them. But just listen to Cancer. Cancer's awesome. At least definitely these first two albums for sure. There's some hiccups along the way, but these first two, golden. So check them out. And keeping with the theme of reissues, we have a reissue of Troubles, The Skull. Their second album, Chicago-based Doom Legends, rest in peace, Eric Wagner. This was one I've been missing for a while, and I love their debut, but I think this one pretty much kind of left that one in the dust. Great debut, The Skull rules. I think Wagner sounded even more confident in terms of his vocals, showed off way more of his range. The songwriting here is absolutely fantastic. Fear No Evil sounds like a doom-laden Judas Priest song and the hook on that is incredible. There are so many great guitar harmonies on here and they all capture that doomy, oppressive feel, especially the wish, uh, wickedness of man. I could pretty much gush about every single track on here. Every single track on here I think is really good and this pretty much just captures everything I love about classic doom metal. So I was super happy to find this one in the record store. I don't know what year this one came out, but I know this is the Hammer Heart Records reissue. If you've been looking for a copy of this, I strongly recommend this one. This remaster sounds really good. Great, lush, full sound. Love this album. I strongly recommend it. And I'd say check this one out. Whatever copy you can actually find of it, just get it. It is a doom essential in my mind. So check it out. Breather Resist, Only in the Morning. This is the first EP from this Louisville-based hardcore band, and I actually learned something on this because I was pretty much wondering what the hell happened in this band, and it turns out they became the band Young Widows, and I actually own some Young Widows stuff, and I was like, huh, okay, well, now I know that. Now, this is definitely different than Young Widows. Young Widows, I feel, is a little bit more rock-oriented. It's still heavy, it's still kind of wild and nutty in its own way, but not like this. This is more of that spazzy, hardcore slash metalcore, kind of similar to like Botch and Norma Jean and, you know, stuff like that. All these songs pretty much go for those weird off-time grooves, very distant riffs, just kind of angular crawling and really, really spastic screamed vocals that kind of almost follow their own cadences. There are some really cool grooves and like, you know, solid breakdowns on here, but a lot of this is just in your face and nuts. And generally, I really like that. I think this is actually a pretty solid EP. The last track being the longest track, I was kind of expecting like a longer song just in general, but 
uh, the whole middle of it is a long looped applause and then they kind of do like a little big show ending at the end of it and I don't know just kind of thought that was annoying like I felt like that was something to pad out length but it's an EP you don't really need to pad out much length on there but overall I did enjoy this. This was actually a pretty solid listen. I like that really kind of wild sounding hardcore every now and then, and this definitely scratched that itch. So if you've never jammed Breathe or Resist, I recommend this one. And that last track is a little bit annoying, but it's really good up until that dumb applause loop. But it kind of just irritated me that it hung out for so long. But yeah, if you want some spazzy hardcore, definitely check this out. Atre Billis, Divinility. This is their debut EP, came out on Transcending Obscurity. And I did just review their new full length, which came out on 20 bucks spin. So these guys have been on some really killer labels. This is some really just interesting kind of like, I don't know, it's brutal, but it's atmospheric. It has some old school nods, but it's definitely modern. So these guys kind of have this very interesting kind of all encompassing death metal sound. It definitely has a lot of technical elements. But again, it still brings a lot of groove. The songs are really well written. Like, I really like the technical elements. There's a lot of interesting dissonant melodies. The vocals, again, much like they are on the full length, varied. He does like really good low vocals, mid-register scream, and a like high kind of Black Dahlia Murder kind of scream on there. And even has those really cool chants that are on the new album on the song uh, Ectopian. And in terms of atmosphere, I mean, it's kind of much like what they did in their full length. There's just these little like weird pockets of like dissonant melodies and then you have like really interesting strings on a ceremony of sectioning so this is kind of an interesting like again kind of they're in a lot of different camps for death metal but they do all those parts really well there's even some like brutal death metal elements on here so pretty much i can just say if you like death metal and you like hearing some cool like varied up stuff in it definitely check this out and check out their full length too because it's also really good and finally, we have Replicant, Malignant Reality. So the second full length from this New Jersey-based death metal band, and I know a lot of people have been asking me to you know, give my thoughts on this album, and I did jam it, and I did get it, so that's a pretty good sign that I liked it, because I did. Literally, the first track on here reminded me so much of early Machine Head with that little like harmonic sort of beat in that riff. And that just instantly sort of triggered like a old school, like, you know, teenage memory of mine when I first heard that. That was more than enough to get the ball rolling. But as I listen to this, this is a really wild, cathartic, twisted, dark listen in terms of death metal. It starts off, you know, more in like the realm of like just very brutal, but kind of technical death metal. Kind of similar to Hate Eternal in a lot of respects. But when it comes down to atmosphere, this is just kind of all over the place. I believe the opening track, the one that I brought up, Caverns of Insipid Reflection, it has this strange sort of dreamy outro melody that's very strange. It's, I don't know, hard to describe because there's a lot of atonal riffing on here. And man, when they dial in some weird, man, it's, it's very spacey weird. Especially the song Rabid Future, the beginning of that is very, very strange and unsettling. But I really liked all this. And the Martin Van Drunen like raw throaty howls, it kind of gives it like a just desperate feel. Like it sounds like he is just choking to death at the bottom of a well. I don't know, like this whole album is really, really wild and I really ended up digging it. It has a very strange atmosphere and you get a lot of cool, just flat up brutal moments on here and the songwriting I hear is just wild as hell. But the cool thing is it's not overly technical and just kind of strange for the sake of being strange. They know how to deliver some just punishing chuggy riffs, especially dressed in violence. Holy shit, that triplet chug is just, uh man, brutal as hell. If you see those guys live and they play that, say the fuck out of the pit. That is a dangerous triplet chug. But yeah, I really dug this and thank you all for recommending this one. I'm not sure which one of you, I know it was more than one. So I'm just gonna say thank you to anyone that brought up this band and say, hey, check them out because you guys were right. So yeah, definitely check this out. If you haven't checked it out, it is a monster of a listen. All right, that knocks out another stack. I'm already working on another stack because I'm me and yeah, hit up Rotted Life. They had some stuff that I hadn't bought yet. So yeah, 
That's pretty much all it really takes. So by the time you see this, we're either close to shooting our incantation ranking, or we've already shot it and I am currently editing it, or you'll see it before this. I'm not really sure. It just kind of depends on how things get laid out, but we are getting real close to that one. And after that is the Mighty Entombed, and definitely looking forward to that. But yeah, tons of reviews coming. Again, this month is the gauntlet, and we're going to try to cover as much of it as possible. And I have a feeling the first part of November is going to be about the same. Actually, it might be all November. Who knows? I haven't really looked at November just because this month has been intimidating enough. But we're going to do it, and we're going to have fun doing it. So, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you are new to the channel, subscribe, because we do stuff like this all the time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there will be a link below. We also do have shirts available at thrallsofmetal at gmail.com. Just hit us up in the Gmail there, put shirts in there. We will get back to you and hopefully sell you a shirt. We are super thankful for all of you getting us to and past the 7,500 mark. And eventually we're going to come up with a cool giveaway for 10k because that seems like a appropriate number to do a big giveaway on because it's huge and again well beyond what we thought would happen with this. So this has grown immensely and we love the fact that you guys tune in and watch us. It's truly an awesome feeling and it's truly awesome to get a chance to bullshit with you guys whenever I can. So. Once again, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and we will catch you later.